The problem says the refractive indices n of two transparent slabs are 2 and 2 by root 3. They are attached together and placed in a third transparent medium of refractive index root 2. As shown, the thickness of the upper slab is 1 cm. A monochromatic light ray is incident on the upper slab at 45 degrees. What would be the thickness in centimeters of the lower slab such that the lateral shift of the ray after passing through both the slabs is zero? Which means if the composite slab had been absent, the light would travel in the same direction, continue to travel. And they're saying because of the particular thicknesses of these two uh, composite slabs or uh, we'll say the individual slabs the net shift is also zero so we need to find this okay need to find this call it x and now we will be applying stale's law and finding the value of x remember this is geometrical optics ray optics is geometrical optics so we will be applying geometry trigonometry to solve the problem understood so first tell me how many refractions or how many times will that ray undergo refraction yes let's call this three times three times, three times. let's call this as medium one medium two medium three and again medium one okay now add this particular uh, Okay, at that particular uh, point, there will be first refraction, then second refraction there, and a third refraction there. Okay, now observe this. Root 2 is less than 2. Which means, this ray, when it enters the slab for the first time, it is going to bend towards the normal. Raise your hands if you got that. Okay. So let us now draw another uh, normal here. Okay. Can we find the angle of uh, refraction here? Can you find this angle? How will you find it? For that, we need to know the relative refractive index of 2 with respect to 1. Okay. Uh, is there any anyone who can tell me this? The relative refractive index what will that be it will be n2 by n1 and n2 by n1 will be 2 by root 2 or uh, root 2 <coughs> understood so sine 45 upon let's call that angle as theta when will be root 2 okay take sin theta 1 on that side sin 45 is 1 by root 2 this root 2 will come to LHS and you will get 1 upon root 2 into root 2 so that will be 1 upon 2 this implies that theta 1 is sin inverse of 1 upon root 2 inverse trigonometric functions and that is nothing but 30 degrees so we have successfully obtained this angle as 30. Okay, this angle as, okay, let me not uh, call it there. Let's call it theta 1. The theta 1 is 30. Understood? Now, because that theta 1 is 30, if we zoom in, this angle by the alternate angles property will also be 30. Correct? Now, look at 2 and 2 by root 3. 2 and 2 by root 3. Which one is greater? 2 is greater. Which means our ray is now traveling from a denser medium, optically denser medium to an optically rarer medium. Okay, so it will bend away from the normal. Okay. it is going to bend away from the normal so yes. cool so let's now call this angle as theta 2 
Okay, let's now call that angle as theta two. So this angle will automatically be theta two. Okay. Now, at the interface of the medium two and medium three, by Snell's law, what equation can you write? Can you tell me that equation? Sin theta one, which is one by two. Oh, sorry. A sin theta two. Two. No, sin theta. Sin theta one upon sin theta two. This is going to be n three two, which will be n three by n two. N three is how much? Two by root three. How much is n two? Two. So this is going to be one by root three. Sin theta one is already known. One by two. So what will be sin theta two? Sin theta two will be send sin theta two to RHS numerator. Send root three to LHS numerator. Theta one is already known. Sin theta one is half. Root three will sit in its numerator. This implies that theta two is sin inverse of root three by two, and that angle will be sixty degrees. Okay, theta two is now sixty. Hope hope this is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Ah, huh. and then this angle is again forty five because of no ah uh, deflection. Cool. Now, using these angles that we have found out, we would like to find the ah uh, well the thickness of the slab. Okay, which 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 we have called x. How can we do that? To do that. we will make use of geometry of course and for that let's consider this right angled triangle okay let's consider this right angled triangle and let me draw it separately okay let me draw it separately and we know both these angles now okay uh, theta 2 happens to be 60 and theta 1 happens to be 30 thicknesses are 1 and x okay and we also know something about the green triangle and that is that triangle is actually 45 45 90 because this is the angle of incidence which is 5 by 4 and so is this angle and so is this angle have you followed this it is a right angled triangle but it is a 45 45 90 triangle also hope everybody got that yes Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Cool. So, how can we solve it? First of all, in that right triangle, we know that this length, okay, this length and this length, they both are same because it is forty-five, forty-five, ninety triangle. Okay. We already know one plus x. Now, what we will do is we'll try to find out. the length of this side in terms of angles theta 1 and theta 2 okay <clears throat> now for that let's do a construction small construction let's drop a perpendicular here okay and we will split this horizontal green segment into two parts okay among those two parts i mean first part is going to be this one or this can anybody tell me the length of that It's easy. Look at our uh, tan pi by six, one by root three. This is the opposite side. Let's call it y temporarily upon adjacent side. Okay, adjacent side is one. So that tick marked length is actually one by root three. 
okay that tick mark length is actually 1 by root 3 and now let's go to this length okay let's go to this length and let's call it a z okay let's call it z now for z what can we write for z we can use theta 2 which is pi by 3 okay and again i can say that tan pi by 3 which is root 3 this is opposite side upon adjacent side which is x so z is going to be x into tan pi by 3 so root 3 once you get both these you apply the simple collinearity and say that therefore 1 plus x is equal to y plus z but y is 1 by root 3 z is root 3x simplify to get the answer 1 minus 1 upon root 3 x common root 3 minus 1 root 3 minus 1 will get cancelled 1 upon root 3 option clear 